We're back to Neil Haley Show. I'm excited to welcome the program. My co-host, Paul Hollis, author of the Hollow Man series and Seniors Publishing. How are you, Paul? And who are you excited about our guest today? Because I go back I, as so many years ago when I first started in radio, and now we're back together again. But go ahead, Paul, and introduce our guest. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited today. We have <clears throat> Sean Mitchell, and he is not only an author, but a, a wonderful hip-hop guy and uh and we want to learn way more about this interesting man <laughs> so sean here's we're going to talk about your new book and that but you got me some pretty amazing artists on the show back in the day we co-hosted and man those are they, they're they're, little, they're like the epic ones and you were impressed about my hip-hop knowledge weren't you sean right absolutely absolutely yes. I mean, back in the day <laughs> because trust me i was listening to whammo Back in the day at 3 a.m. when they had the music and man, hip hop and all those things. I'm trying to remember. I know we had one of the people from uh, the Fat Boys on. I oh, forgot all the different yes. people we had. I got, and I got yeah. those shows somewhere in the yeah. archive of the celebrity <laughs> interviews. And we've gone far advanced. But tell me specifically what's happening to you now, man. What's new? Oh, wow. Right now I, I have the uh, new album out. It's called The X Factor. So it's it's a instrumental hip hop album. So what I'm trying to do with the instrumental hip hop, I'm trying to expand the genre and, uh, and try to appeal to an older audience that's that kind of grew up with hip hop. And a lot of my peers you know, we don't really care for some of the language in some of today's music. And so I'm creating an alternative style of hip hop so that the older hip hop heads like myself and yourself, you know, we can have a, a style of hip hop to listen to uh, that's more conducive towards our age group. Yeah, that's huge, because think about it. We are just into the stuff that was the beginning, the right. beginning of hip hop, the music yeah. that really made this genre right and yeah. made where it is today and what are young people today not understanding it man what's happening yeah you know down the road you know over the years because uh when it came first came out in 1979 you know they, they were um different um you have small labels like sugar hill records you had def jam you had profile and a couple of smaller labels like um bobby robinson had the enjoy label coming out of harlem though that was the beginning of hip-hop in terms of the records and over the years i think uh as it expanded and gained popularity i think it crossed different lines in terms of corporate america and then other people that weren't involved in the uh originating hip hop sort of came in and looked at it as a money grab. And so people started using uh, the music for shock effect and saying different things that would get attention in order to boost their record sales. And so it kind of got watered down from, uh, from its beginning. So, you know, the era that uh, we came up with, you know, you could dance, you could party, and you didn't have to worry about no one talking about shooting guns and getting stabbed. And that so you think that was gimmick then? It was really oh, gimmicked. Absolutely. When I first when that first came Eli out, crew and then NWA, <laughs> all that's gimmick yes. stuff, bro. Yes, that's how it started out. Now, as as the gimmick gained popularity, it brought in certain artists that had um a background coming from the streets. And so they tried to actualize it in the music. But it started out as a gimmick. Yeah, it, it absolutely started out as a gimmick. It was a way to say something that would grab people's attention and get the media looking at it. Because now you could, and I give you a perfect example. Uh, you brought up Luke Skywalker and the two live crew. Yeah. Their first album came out and went gold. It sold half a million copies. Once they came out and got the media attention about the sex, uh, it was basically porno on music or porno on wax is what they called it. And after all the media attention, the album sells their next album as nasty as they want to be. It sold two million copies. And so you went from a half a million going gold to two million going double platinum. The Kings way, yeah, right. <laughs> figured out, yes, yes, yes. So people figured out that if you say certain things, that's going to grab attention and, from the media. Right. And, and NWA it was, did it totally. Yeah. 
I mean, that yeah. just uh, absolutely. So you have another book out too, right? What's up? You oh, yeah, out? I have another book out because I try to incorporate activism with my uh, hip with hip hop, and so I kind of do what the Public Enemy, Kumo D, and some of those artists do in terms of trying to reach um, the African American audience and trying to inspire them, uh, give them some uh, positive information that will sort of uh, help change our conditions for the better as opposed to making music that would um, exploit uh, the struggles that a lot of our people are dealing with on the streets. You know, guys can talk about in their music, they can talk about the game culture, but what are they saying to try to correct the game culture? And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make music, uh, continue making hip hop, but I'm also trying to come out with a positive message that would try to uplift people and try to change the conditions as opposed to just talking about it and trying to sell uh, records based on exploiting the uh, conditions that a lot of our people are in. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. When, when that, that, that book came out when? That book came out about two months ago, actually. It's called Afro Spirituality. So it's trying to incorporate a spiritual aspect to the consciousness of people so that we could try to improve their lives and make things a little bit better. Yeah, so trying to get people, keep people from going to jail and from joining gangs as opposed to exploiting it in the music right. and talking about guns and that type of thing. Yeah. Well, I got a person definitely I'm going to bring you on. Uh, uh, my friend uh, Damon Harvard, Cowboy347, he has Smarter by the Day podcast. He'll love having you on. And we're working together on some specific joint ventures. I got things moving. We're moving, man. And, 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 and right. very soon, <laughs> the media giant is going full effect. I would All just right. give All it right. maybe a week and you put the, and you're going to see something really big happening. So, Sean, right. here's the thing, man. How are you connected all those hip art artists that we were interviewing? Was it based on your first book that you built all those relationships, like from the Fat Boys and all that stuff kind of go into that? Right, right. It, it was based on uh, people that I met through the years doing hip hop music, as well as writing the book. I met new people writing the book. I've met other artists since then. Uh, in fact, I was going to surprise you and bring on JJ Fab with me right now. Uh, and I thought about it and I was like, well, maybe I'll do that the next time. But uh, yeah, I uh, I just did the, uh, you know, I write articles on the 50th anniversary of hip hop for USA Today. So we just came out with a hip hop fashion article in the USA Today. So if you can get a chance to get the print edition of USA Today, go check it out. I have the article in there. I interviewed Pete Nice from Third Base, uh, Van Silk, Kumo D, DMC of Run DMC. Uh, I had a lot more artists that they had to edit out because there wasn't enough space in the article to put everybody I had in there. <laughs> but I had a lot more articles and uh but yeah, I was actually going to surprise you with JJ Fad. But what I'll do is the next time we we um, we set something up, I'll have them on as a guest. And they they actually, you know, I kind of got to give them a shout out anyway because once I had a, a wonderful interview with JJ Fad for the hip hop article, and once they edited, it, they took everything out. So <laughs> you got to so you got to make yeah. sure you make yeah. sure it happened another way. Best right, place, exactly. Sean, where people can go to find you where can they go yes actually facebook right now i'm in the process of trying to work on a, a rebuild my uh, website which will be seanxlg.com and Sean, so yes go ahead. yeah 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 so i'm trying to get that back and ju just trying to do some social media and and still still create new music and uh my new album the x factor is gaining momentum of course. Uh, so if you get a chance to go on YouTube, check it out. Check out the album. Uh, so it's doing really well right now. But of course, you know, everything when you're independent, you know, it, everything takes time. It takes money. It takes effort. And you have to reach out and connect with other people to try to get things going. So. All right. We appreciate it, Sean. Take yeah. care, sir. All, All right. right you too. You're listening right. and watching the Neil Haley Show. And we'll be back in just a moment.